hello. Am I there? Yeah. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? This is Marcelo Palermo. We're live here. Uh, found the coffee shop where you can sit outside and watch. It's quite a fantastic thing because <clears throat> you get to enjoy, like myself, a good espresso. I was happy before I was a bit asleep, so I had to record a couple of shows today and uh, melancholic feeling asleep, you know. Unfortunately, we already got me energy back and um, right here using this background that you probably see little because it's too dark already uh, here in Novaso. We, we hit around 6 p.m. It's already dark. Remember that we uh, brought back the clock one hour and that means that it's going to be a little bit uh, darker earlier but uh, well we had a bizarre day today regarding the presidential elections uh, the president came out with a statement that was a little bit too outrageous uh, and i think that he keeps on shooting himself in the foot either the right or the left one he's still shooting himself on his feet <clears throat> and the reason why I say this is because he still has mathematical chances of winning. But the more he comes out talking about fraud and uh, technical electoral problems, saying that he has a lot of evidence which he hasn't produced yet, uh, the more he says that, actually, um, the more that it looks like, at least when you have some experience, analyzing and, and covering elections so when a person starts acting erratic like that you know I, I, and again there's no precedent for uh, i mean a donald trump kind of uh, style when it comes down to the quiet things the different things and the way he reacts tells you that probably there is a lot of concern about them losing and why is that because the bears that are coming by mail are actually arriving and mostly they're coming when it comes down to say Pennsylvania, when it comes down to um, Georgia, it's all uh, from the urban centers. And as we know, urban centers are mostly Democrats. Uh, Democrats mostly were the ones who voted by mail. And again, I'm not a fan of voting by mail, but the truth is that voters are coming in and it's more than likely that those votes are going to reflect more a blue position, like say voting leaning towards Democrats. So uh, Biden is in a clear path uh, towards victory, as I was saying yesterday. He has seven paths to victory against three for Donald Trump. Well, now the president already unfolded the plan of going full throttle with the legal actions, and he probably will, and he should if he wants to do so. But I think that again, he is, uh, let's use an urban term. Uh, I heard this a lot in England back in the day. Uh, you're pissing off the pot, mate. He really is because unfortunately, uh, he's not reading the fact that he might actually have, you know, his three paths to victory he could be strong. He's not letting the process go on and talking about fraud when we all know that what's happening is that most people voted via email, I mean, you know, mail, the regular mail, because of the COVID-19 situation. And most of those people are Democrats because they were talking more about voting by mail. Uh, that didn't happen in the case of many Republicans who voted, uh, either early or during the very day of the election, the, uh, November the 3rd. Um, so that is the main problem you see and when the president comes off every time he uh, has something to say it's getting more and more outrageous more outrageous and he is somehow annoying some of his uh, soon to be former republican allies and i truly believe that people like mitch mcconnell uh, lindsey graham uh, and we're talking about those two particularly i don't know what's going to happen with john Cornyn, but they retain their seats in the senate and i believe eventually they're going to say well okay mate if you want to go down this road we can no longer be uh, with you it might happen it may not happen but it looks like especially when with mr uh, with mr uh, uh, rubio marco rubio he already tweeted something that was thank you very much that was very obvious uh, that indicates that he is already in disagreement with the president and uh, of course no wonder but that said um 
we are going to see what's going to happen. We are kind of on a stalemate. Uh, quite interestingly, Fox News, which is the, the, the news outlet that has the most host, hosts that are actually pro President Trump, uh, are giving already, uh, have been giving Arizona to Joe Biden since um, yesterday and even two days ago. So uh, they are the ones who are counting more delegates for Joe Biden. We're talking about 263 against uh, 213 or 14 for Trump. In other media outlets, they are actually giving uh, President Trump 213 delegates against uh, 253 for Mr. Biden. So when you see all those things happening and you see the paths to victory, you just think that it's a matter of waiting. And that's it. Uh, the weird situation that is happening that in the states and play again we cannot count much we cannot say much about uh, Alaska because there are only three votes electoral votes in play there are three delegates Nevada is six but Nevada will be the complementary one let's say if Biden wins Arizona he gets 11 uh, delegates and then uh, wins Nevada he gets six and he hits seven, 270 and when you hit 270 you have 270 delegates you are the winner. He's going to be the next president. And now, if he wins Pennsylvania, uh, he hits 20 delegates and having 253 right now, according to most of the media, uh, media outlets, that is, and most of the agencies and news agencies, well, the, actually the counting, the official counting gives him 253 uh, delegates. If he gets the 20 of Pennsylvania, it is, of course, game over, which has one state, game over because he uh, wins 20 delegates and that will count for 273 uh, delegates so he hit the magic number for the electoral college and to surpass it by three in the case of Trump he has to make many combinations like for example win Pennsylvania and uh, Georgia he cannot afford to lose any of those and North Carolina which has been narrowing as well but North Carolina I think that most likely chances odds are that President Trump will win North Carolina. Things still looking uh, a little bit complicated for Trump in both Arizona and Nevada, although he has narrowed the margin. But as the counting processes uh, uh, keeps on going and moving forward, Biden keeps on being ahead. So that is the thing. And uh, we are still on a stalemate in matters of when they're going to count or finish counting the votes I mean in the midst in the midst of this electoral process that has been quite long stressing and stressful and complicated mostly because of the mailing ballots the voting by mail and um, the added uh, insult to the injury that would be the COVID-19 situation not lots of people talking about it many of them a little bit out of it and I think that everybody should never notice that the country the United States of America has been performing really badly during this week COVID-19 wise speaking uh, yesterday we had new 100,000 cases in one bloody day that is a lot and it really should concern us because once we get off this nightmare that is being this 2020 presidential election, we're going to have to go back to the COVID situation, how we fight back because the virus, again, and this is for all of you, virus has no allegiances, has no gods, has no political affiliations, no ideologies. The virus has only one purpose in life, which is to thrive in the matter of, matters of surviving and multiplying. That's it. It's a very basic form of life. And he doesn't grieve, or it doesn't grieve. He doesn't feel no remorse, no feelings, nothing. It's a very simple, basic form of life that complicates things for everyone. And I mean everyone. We are under a pandemic situation. It's an electoral year. The elections uh, are being marked and uh, disputed. The president is already saying that he will take legal actions. We wanted to have a result by Friday, by tomorrow, but who knows what's going to happen. More things are unfolding as we speak. Now, when it comes down to the result, 
been very objective, unbiased. Both candidates still have chances. If I will have been the president, I really don't understand who uh, advises the president. I know who they are, but I believe that I don't really understand the process of them or if they do have any incidents in talking with him or to him. Because what I will tell him is, Mr. President, you do have mathematical chances of winning this thing. Wait until the votes are counted. All of them, until we have at least, not all of them, but until we have an official result. And then, then we can talk about legal actions. I think that that way things will, will have run smoothly. But, or, or, or a little bit better, least, but, you know, the president didn't waste any time on that. So, uh, that is the problem that we are having here. And cheers, mates. Wonderful coffee, really. Here, Eloise, and I have a wonderful view. I'm sorry that you guys probably cannot see the full spectrum of it and the mountains behind me and the apartments because of the darkness of this image. But let's say hi to some of the people here. Thank you all very much for joining. Hernando Alvarado, Wonder Nurse. Thank you, buddy. Pat Meyer, Angel, John, uh, Rachel. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, oh, Thomas, uh, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, lots of people here joining us. Pam, how are you doing, dear? How are you doing, sweetheart? You're asking, oh yeah, hello, how are you doing? Who's winning? Well, if you think about as the numbers are right now, uh, Joe Biden is in the lead because he has officially 253 delegates and Trump has 213 or 214, according to which outlet you check. Uh, Fox News, which is actually the media outlet who is more favorable towards uh, President favorable to, to, towards President Trump, is actually giving Biden a um, bigger edge. They already gave him Arizona, and so with that said, Biden, according to Fox News, has 264 delegates, and uh, Trump will have 214. But it's not over there, or not over yet, because as I said before, the path to victory is actually uh, still open for both, uh, both candidates. I mean, Joe Biden has seven paths to victory. I mean, many ways of winning this chess match. That is called the elections, presidential elections 2020. But Donald Trump only had three paths, and the still strong paths. When I think that he shot himself in one of his feet, is when he came out and started uh, talking about fraud and about starting legal actions. Again, if I will be his advisor, I would say, Mr. President, let the process flow. And when we have an official announcement of a projected winner, then you can actually, uh, if you're you, of course, just you know accept the victory. And, you will be in a good spot, but if you are declared the loser, if your rival is declared the winner, then you can come out with some sort of uh, speech or declaration in which you could say that you are looking forward to take some legal action. So that's the thing, and people calm down from both sides of the aisle. We need to bring this together, after all, and uh, let the system work. We cannot talk about a rape system, uh, we cannot talk about uh, fake elections or fraud when we have no proofs uh, about it. Now, if the uh, people from the White House or the President can produce some evidence and show it to everyone, for everyone to see, well then we will see you know, if there's any kind of problems or if we can call these elections or the process read or uh, fraudulent, which we cannot right now. Those accusations are unfounded until we have some solid produced evidence, which by the way is not easy to produce. I mean, I mean nowadays when you go to post counting centers, you have cameras everywhere. So if there has been fraud indeed, we will know cameras will capture that. Trust me, nobody will be able to get away with murder in this case. So that's the thing. And another thing also to say is that you cannot have uh, followers of a candidate, in this case the followers of President Trump, going to writers Arizona manifest in manifestations and uh, asking for Arizona to keep on counting the votes and then 
having them in Pennsylvania and asking for the ballots, for the ballots, of the polls, to, uh, for the ballots to stop being counted. So either you are for counting the votes or against counting them. It makes no sense for them to ask, stop counting the votes in Pennsylvania, but keep on counting in Arizona. That is like, I don't know, me saying, I'm going to go into a boxing match, and when my rival throws a punch, I will tell him, hey, throw it to the other side, let me pick up, put up my hands, but you have to throw it to the air. And when I throw a punch, I will ask him to drop his guard, put his nice face in front of me, and let me knock the hell out of him. That would be unfair. Well, this is the same case here, uh, paraphrasing my friend Ray Mancera, who the other day when we were live on Radio CNN, KDAV, 1340 and 92.7 FM, talked about, uh, used actually boxing, uh, the sport of boxing to compare what's go what was going on with this presidential elections in this 2020. And I think he's right. You cannot go and protest in one state and ask for them to stop counting votes and go to another state and say, keep on counting the bloody votes, let them flow. It makes no sense. You have to be coherent and keep a position, you see. Again, the Trump supporters and the Biden supporters let the system work. Once we have a projected winner, if Mr. Trump thinks that uh, a thing and, and, and projects that the winner has been elected by a process that has been flawed and he suspects that it has been fraudulent and he knows and, and we all know that he does well if that is the case then he can file a suit he has a, an army of lawyers and people working the legal aspect already of this election I just think that he should wait because it makes him look bad to anticipate things. It's pretty much like he's saying, okay, I know I'm going to lose, so I'm going to call it rigged and fraudulent. And really, we don't know if he will lose. This is still an open game. And if, uh, although Biden has more chances, and we have to say it, all stats and numbers and the mathematics, uh, mathematical possibilities are broader for Biden to win this thing that for Trump, they both have a chance to win. So followers of each candidate just wait, be patient. There's no other way around. Nobody told us that we will have a COVID-19 situation, a pandemic situation this year. That's nobody's fault. And again, we got to stop with all this thing that Trump is a racist and a bigot and Biden eats children uh, for dinner and has a special uh, place in which they actually create and operate under the water with a deep state. Listen, there's no proof of that. Not about Biden, not about Trump. We need to stop with all of that. If half of the accusations uh, of, of, of the things that these two candidates have been accused of have been proven they will be both any of them behind bars i'm telling you so i'm not going to talk here about conspiracies conspiracy crazy conspiracy theories or uh, ideas that to be honest cannot be proven and uh, i try to be as unbiased and as objective as possible here what we're going to talk here about is the electoral process there's a president mr donald trump with the republican sign who is uh, competing to get a second term and then the former vice president the, pre the guy who was or the person who was vice president for Barack Obama and was also a senator who's competing to become the new president of the United States of America the numbers right now favors Biden the former vice president but the path to victory is still an open guy so we have to wait and then when we have a projected result then everybody can actually talk about and explain why they have this or that position. You're a Trump follower, you can call it fraud or whatever you want, and surely almost more than, I'm almost more than certain that the president will actually file uh, lawsuits and will contest uh, the result. But you let, you, you have to let, we must let the system work and at least have a projected result. We're not going to wait till the last vote is counted. That's going to take a long time. But we can wait until we have a projected result. And with that on mind, 
let's keep on moving forward and I am going to switch to Spanish to sum things up a little bit here before we go Bueno, soy Marcelo Palomo, esto es Epic News y ahora vamos a hablar un poquito en castellano, español, still in Spanish. Uh, como estaba diciendo, la cosa todavía está muy apretada, pero se me hace que la salida del presidente Trump en cámara para dar un discurso que raya lo absurdo no le beneficia. Se sigue pegando un tiro en el pie el presidente Trump, que yo creo que si los asesores tuvieran, aunque sea un pico de influencia sobre él, le deberían indicar, señor presidente, espere a que terminen las elecciones. No a que, que, a que vote, a que cuenten todos los votos, porque eso se va a tardar mucho. Aún un mes después de terminar las elecciones siguen llegando resultados. Pero el ganador proyectado llega mucho antes, puede llegar en cualquier momento. Y con las declaraciones del presidente el proceso se detiene más aún. Que no son declaraciones que tienen fundamento porque dice que tienen un montón de pruebas, pero no nos han mostrado nada. ¿Verdad? Eh, y por otro lado, un mensaje para los seguidores de Trump también. No pueden ir al estado de Arizona, y pedir, de Arizona y pedir que siga el conteo de votos y luego otros protestar en el estado de Pensilvania y pedir que se detenga el conteo de votos. Entiendan una cosa, para que lo entiendan bien. El proceso electoral es así. Como estamos en pandemia, mucha más gente votó por correo. El problema es que mucha de esa gente que votó por correo eh, se eh, dice, se indica que son eh, más del Partido Demócrata, más azules que eso está por verse, pero lo que tiene que hacer el presidente es dejar que cuenten los votos. De nuevo, una vez que se proyecte al ganador, si es Biden y no le parece al presidente Trump, ahí sí que dispute la decisión, que envíe un mensaje y diga voy a tomar acciones legales y ahí vamos al próximo paso y se verá que, cómo procede. Pero tomar acciones antes de que haya un ganador declarado proyectado, digámoslo así, se me hace muy anticipado y se me hace que se están pegando a sí mismos. No sé de nuevo qué están haciendo los asesores. Le mando un abrazo a Javi Alvarado, querido. Javi, enfermero maravilla. Pam G, ¿cómo estás? Preciosa, bien. Eh, también a Becky, a Johnny, a Tommy, a Robert, Peter, a enfermero maravilla, querido. Mar Bills, ¿cómo estás? Todos un abrazo muy grande. Gracias por seguirme también. Rachel, Raquel, Ángel, querido Angelito. ¿Cómo están todos? Eh? Pat Mayer, les mando un abrazo. Thank you guys for playing here with me. Gracias por estar conmigo. Y reitero. Lo voy a hacer redondito y pronto esto así ya terminamos de una vez con esto, después me toca reportar. Todavía estamos en un stalemate, en un espacio muerto en el tiempo, en donde la, el conteo da así, generalmente le dan 253 delegados a Biden y 213 a Trump. Fox News, la cadena de noticias que es más favorable al presidente, le da más delegados a Biden, ya le asignó a Arizona, por lo cual, los 11 delegados, 253 más 11, 264, 264, se los dan, se los asignan a Biden. Y a Trump le asignan 214 delegados. Entonces, como decíamos, Biden tiene siete rumbos, siete movimientos para una victoria. Trump tiene tres rumbos. Eh, todos son válidos, todavía no ganó nadie. Por eso le digo a los seguidores de Trump, no se peguen tiros en los pies, espérense. Pongan el grito en el cielo si no están de acuerdo una vez que se haya declarado un ganador. Pero esperen al conteo porque ¿qué van a decir si después del conteo de votos, incluso por correo, de repente se diera, lo veo yo personalmente muy difícil, pero ¿qué si se diera que ganó Trump? ¿Qué van a decir entonces? ¿Que no? ¿Que no estaba el proceso este, viciado y que no había fraude? cuando estuvieron pidiendo a gritos fraude todo el tiempo, porque el presidente salió a decirlo, a indicarlo en Twitter. Ya los uh, hombres fuertes y las mujeres fuertes del Partido Republicano están empezando a salirse de su lado. Ya Marco Rubio tuiteó, me envió un Twitter eh, con un mensaje, un tiro por elevación para el presidente, hablando sobre el conteo de votos también, y como pidiendo un poco de prudencia, sin decirlo al presidente Trump, Chris Christie, el ex gobernador de uh, Nueva Jersey también, y yo creo que va a pasar lo mismo con los grandes peces gordos del Senado, como son este, Lindsey Graham, eh, como es también Mitch McConnell, no sé si será el caso de John Corning, todos que retuvieron su asiento y que quieren seguir adelante con su carrera política y ven en esto lo que está haciendo el presidente, algo que verdaderamente no se condice con el proceso democrático. Eh, lógico, perennial. 
no estoy discutiendo acá si tiene o no razón el presidente. Yo no creo que hay fundamentos, pero si presenta pruebas y son contundentes, obvio que habrá que proceder. Pero lo que me parece es que las pruebas o, o, o los reclamos se tienen que hacer una vez que el proceso se termine. Porque otra vez, si bien creo que hay muchas más posibilidades para Biden para ganar o llegar a los de 100, 270 delegados, también considero que Trump tiene chances. ¿Y qué pasa si gana? ¿Qué pasa si de todos esos votos por correo en Pensilvania, Georgia, en uh, eh, Nevada, en... Arizona de repente sigue la cosa como está y empieza a subir para Trump. De nuevo, desde un punto de vista personal y analizando que, o entendiendo que el correo, el voto por correo eh, le favorece, le debería de favorecer técnicamente más a Biden, es difícil que eso pase. Pero puede pasar, claro que puede pasar, el hecho de que Trump gane. Todavía tiene chances matemáticas y muy fuertes. Entonces no entiendo por qué el presidente no se espera. No entiendo por qué no puede controlar su ansiedad y dar los mensajes que dan que verdaderamente no son presidenciales. Cuando todavía tiene chance de eh, agarrar un segundo término en esta elección y seguir adelante. Otra cosa, y es muy fundamental, a los seguidores de ambos partidos tienen que mantener la calma y entender que estas elecciones son para el bien de un país, no de un partido político. Y de nuevo, paremos con las teorías conspirativas. Lo voy a hablar desde un punto de vista lo más objetivo o objetivo que No creo, yo no creo, no, no, no considero, no evalúo en mis análisis que el presidente sea, el presidente Trump, que no, no creo, no evalúo que sea un racista, eh, un degenerado, ni un tipo que ande escondiéndole cosas a la gente, ni nada por el estilo. Sus negocios y su vida personal son sus negocios y su vida personal. Por algo lo eligieron presidente en el 2016, ganó con el colegio electoral y ahora le está tocando estar eh, atrás, ¿verdad? Y eso es todo, es parte del juego electoral, es parte de la democracia, de una república. Tampoco creo que Biden coma niños a la noche para su cena, ni que tenga un centro de aborto, ni que esté haciendo negociados escondidos con un estado profundo, ni nada de esas cosas que se proyectan en las teorías conspirativas, que si la mitad de esas cosas fueran reales, pues... Ambos hombres estarían tras las rejas en este momento. Ninguno lo está. Créanme, cuando usted conoce cómo trabaja el FBI, la CIA, las agencias de inteligencia que están en lo profundo de lo que tiene que ver un gobierno y su estructura, sabe que en un país como este, que dentro de los países y el espectro de los países, si bien con muchos defectos, somos de los más serios, en esa materia seguro. Esas cosas no deben ser consideradas a la hora de analizar información seria. Una cosa es lo que usted dice que le dijeron, que le contaron, que pueda pensar, y otra cosa es lo que le comente yo con datos e información precisa, que tengo más de 25 años haciendo esto, y lo he hecho en aproximadamente el 85% del mundo, cubriendo arriba de... 100 elecciones y 200 eventos internacionales en los que se involucraba eh, votaciones, decisiones, eh, discusiones parlamentarias, eh, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Lo he hecho en las Naciones Unidas, lo he hecho en este país y en otras partes del mundo. Por eso mi deber es darles un mensaje claro y preciso de información analítica. No buscar reptilianos abajo de la tierra, ni elefantes con cuernitos verdes y alitas coloradas tirando fuego por la trompa. Eso es parte de la especulación. No, no me consta que nada de eso exista. Yo veo a dos personas, tanto Trump como Biden, que ambos quieren quien no quisiera tener éxito y querer hacer las cosas bien para su país porque le representa eso a la persona, consagrarse también. No creo que Trump esté ahí por Trump o que Biden esté ahí por Biden. Creo que ambos están para hacer las cosas bien o lo que consideran ellos que son las cosas bien. Creo que es una movida eh, elogiable el que una persona quiere ser presidente de su país, porque tampoco es algo fácil ni llegar ni estar en esa posición. Ahora lo que tenemos que esperar son los resultados, no el final, le reitero, porque no vamos a esperar hasta diciembre, se proyecta un ganador mucho antes, cuando ya las eh, posibilidades matemáticas están agotadas. Lo que sigue después es el resto de la parte técnica y administrativa y burocrática del proceso. Pero una vez que se declare un ganador, ahí sí veremos qué se puede hacer o qué quieren hacer ambos candidatos. Obvio que el candidato que sea declarado ganador va a estar muy contento con esa declaración, 
y el que no, en el caso de Trump, si es así, yo creo que sí que va a proceder con una acción legal y está en todo su derecho, si lo quiere hacer, que lo haga y la justicia va a determinar cómo son las cosas. Mientras tanto, sigamos tranquilos y disfrutemos de la fiesta de la democracia, que es una fiesta que no muchos países del mundo la pueden tener, especialmente al nivel que la tenemos aquí, con 331 millones de habitantes en Estados Unidos de América. Señoras y señores, gracias. Este es Marcelo Palermo para Epic News. Y este video va a estar también en nuestro canal de YouTube, Epic News. Thank you all very much. This is Marcelo Palermo for Epic News. And this video will be available at our YouTube channel, Epic News. You all have a blessed night. Take it easy, be cool, and enjoy this democratic celebration, which is a celebration of voting. Uh, as, we, uh, as I was saying in Spanish, not many countries, or not all countries actually, have the privilege to go to the polls and vote for the candidate they want. Thank you very much. You all have a great night.